In this video, we're going to look at making a subject more clear in an image using a high pass filter in Adobe Photoshop. So, here I have a photograph of the moon that I took back in 2015 using a Canon T3i with a kit lens that was a 55 to 250 millimeter. There's nothing special about this equipment, and by today's standard, the camera is actually considered to be quite old. As you can see, I've already made my changes to most of the image. The most important things that I haven't changed on this image, I have not added any contrast, I have not touched the clarity, and I have not used dehaze. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to make sure sharpening is set to zero. Sometimes by default, Lightroom will crank that up a little bit on you. So you're going to want that on zero. And you're also going to want to remove any noise reduction that's in place. The reason for all of this is a high pass filter is going to provide a contrast on either side of any line that it picks up and sees as the edge. So if we already have contrast or noise reduction, it's going to take away from the actual effect of that filter. So once we have all of our settings in place the way that we would like them, it's time to open the image in Photoshop. So I'm going to zoom out on the image so I can see the image in full screen again. And always as a rule of thumb, even though the image is showing on the screen, I like to make sure it's selected by just giving it a click down here on the film strip. Then the next thing I'm going to do is go up to the toolbar here at the top. I'm going to go to Photo, Edit In, and then I'm going to go over to Edit in Adobe Photoshop. Now you can see here, if you use a different application, you can select it. It says right, right there, Edit in another application. But for this tutorial, I'm using Photoshop. So we're going to be going to edit in Adobe Photoshop 2020. Another thing you can do, and this shortcut is for Windows, I believe Mac would be using Command instead of Control, is you can simply make sure that the image is selected and then hold down the Control or Command key and press E. This is a quick shortcut to get the image to open in Photoshop. So now you can see Photoshop is loading. And there's the picture of the moon. So now the next thing that I'm going to need to do is make a mask out of the moon. So I'm going to zoom in. I guess I kind of zoomed in a little bit too much here. I want to be able to see the whole moon. There we go. And I'm going to use the quick selection tool. You can see it's listed with the magic wand and the other selection tools. If it's not on your toolbar, just go down to this dot, 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 right click, and you're going to want to look for it in here. If it's not here, don't worry, you just go up to the top and click on Edit Toolbar. Now on the left hand side of the screen, we have the items that are already in the toolbar. And if I scroll down, I'm going to go to where the shortcut key is W, and there it is right there, Quick Selection Tool. Had it not been there, it would be over here on the right hand side and I would just simply have to grab it and drag it and drop it over onto the left. Very easy stuff. And once we have that figured out, we're just going to go up to the top right here and click Done. Then we're going to grab the Quick Selection tool from the toolbar, and we're going to start by selecting the moon. All right, so there we go. Most of the moon is selected. I'm just going to fine tune it a little bit. There's um, there's some parts here where it's a little bit on the dark side, so I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to remove some of the parts that are actually completely black, and I'm going to pick up some of the spots there where the selection brush missed because they're a little bit dark, and it thinks it's actually part of the background. We're just going to go over here and remove some of this. And I'm going to go up to the top and I'm going to just make sure that I have this part selected. I want to try to get as much definition as I can on these craters. Okay, so now I've got that the way that I would like it. I'm 
Now I'm going to want to make a layer from my selection. So to do that, I can go up to Layer, then New, then down here, Layer via Copy. Now another thing I can do is I can simply just press Control J or Command J with a Mac. So I'll press Control J, and over here where we have our layers, we can see there's one of the moon and one of the full picture. Now to verify I selected everything I wanted to, I'm going to turn off that background layer. Okay, so the background layer is turned off, and we can see I didn't miss any of the moon. If anything, I actually picked up a little bit more than I needed to, but that's okay. So now with the top layer selected, I'm going to change my blending options. I'm going to change that to an overlay. This is going to allow us to see what effect the high pass filter makes as soon as we apply it. So now I'm going to go up to filter. And I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom. Now, for you, other may be at the very bottom. For me, I use the Nick collection. So I have that here. Any additional plugins are at the bottom. But we're going to want to go to other and then high pass. I'm just going to move this out of the way so it's easier to see the moon. I have to put a number in here between 0.1 and whatever it is that you would like. You can see if I put in zero, it gives me an error. Now the higher this number, the more contrast it's going to provide. This is basically how much contrast it's going to use on each line that it finds and defines as an edge. So for the moon, 2.7 to me is more than adequate. If I was doing a landscape, I probably wouldn't go any higher than 3.5 because you really, you can overdo it with this and get too much contrast. So if I go over here and I zoom in and I show both the, uh, both the layers, we can see a difference with the high pass just by turning off the top layer. See, this is without the high pass and this is with the high pass. See, this is without the high pass, and this is with the high pass. There's definitely a lot more definition being shown when I use the high pass. There's actually even more definition than you can see in this video. Now that I'm satisfied with this, I'm going to merge both these layers together. This is just a preference, it's not something that you have to do. Then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to close the image. Now there's a pop up that comes up here. And it's simply asking me, do I want to save the changes to this CR2 image? Now normally, you'd probably want to use Save As because you don't want to destroy your original image. But you don't have to worry about that here. Photoshop knows that this image came from Lightroom. And what it's going to do is it's going to save it back to Lightroom as part of a stack with the original image. So I'm just going to go ahead and click Yes. And then I'm going to close out Photoshop. So now, when we go back to Lightroom, you'll see there are two images. You can see down here on the film strip, there's a, a little number two and a square. The original image is a CR2, which is what Canon uses as a raw image. The image that I just saved in Photoshop still has the same name, image underscore 0664, but it also has dash edit.tif added to the end of it. So there's our edit. And there's the original image. So you're already getting a lot more clarity and a lot more definition out of the image that was edited with a high pass filter. So now, if I want to make some changes, I can mess around with the exposure. I can add some clarity to it if that's my preference. I can add some contrast. I can lower the blacks. I can do all kinds of things. I can use the Lightroom sharpening if I would like. Not really my preference, but it can be done. Um, the other thing you can do is use some noise reduction if that's required. Just remember, if you use noise reduction, it's going to take away from the clarity of the image again. So too much noise reduction means there is no point in doing the high pass filter to begin with. And once you have your image the way that you'd like it, it's ready for export. Thanks for watching Loving It on Phuket. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and enable notifications so you'll know when the next video is posted. In the meantime, check out some of these other great videos from Phuket, Thailand, 
Southeast Asia, and beyond. Happy traveling!